Welcome to Making a Murderer, Rubber Ducky YouTube channel. Okay, you guys, we're going to start page 34 of our Daily Ma'am reading of the CASO Investigative Reports. Page 331, Type of Activity, Interview of Kathy D. Williford, Date of Activity, 010406, Reporting Officer, Investigator Mark Wiegert. On 010406 at approximately 1800 hours, I, Investigator Wiegert of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, had telephone contact with Callie w Kathy Williford. My reason for contacting Kathy was that she was a photographer for Auto Trader Magazine prior to Teresa Hobbock. Kathy said she started working for the Auto Trader Magazine on 120204 and worked until 042005. I asked Kathy if she had ever been to the Avery residence in her job duties as a photographer for Auto Trader Magazine. Kathy told me she had been to Stephen Avery's residence on one occasion. Kathy states she believed it was on the date of 012505. She states she believed it was on a Tuesday because that was a normal day she would go out and take photos. According to Kathy, she received a lead sheet from Auto Trader magazine. Kathy states those are the sheets they get when they are to go out and take photos. Kathy states she went to the Stephen Avery residence on the morning of 012505, sometime between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. She stated when she arrived, she observed an old cutlass, which was parked outside. She states when she drove up, she noticed the vehicle, and then got out of her car and walked up to the vehicle to verify it was the one that she was to take a photo of. She states she remembers driving to the residence, and that it was very desolate there, and she was somewhat concerned about that. When Kathy drove up to the Avery residence, she stated there was nobody outside. After verifying the car, Kathy walked up to the Stephen Avery residence and knocked on the door. At that time, Stephen stuck his head out and stated he would be right outside. After several minutes, Kathy indicates Steve walks out of the trailer and she takes the picture. Kathy stated she then asked Stephen about the narrative he was supposed to write up. Stephen told Kathy he forgot to write it up, at which time he went into the trailer. Kathy stated at that time she walked up onto the porch and waited for Stephen to come back out with the narrative. Kathy stated it seemed to take an unusual amount of time for him to write up a short narrative which was supposed to go along with the picture. She stated it was very cold outside and at one point Stephen poked his head out the door and stated if she was cold she, page 332 could come inside his trailer. Kathy states she knows they have the policy against going into people's houses, so she went back and sat in her vehicle. Kathy told me it took a good 10 minutes for Stephen to come back out of the trailer. When he came back out, he walked over to her vehicle and handed her the narrative to go along with the picture she had taken. According to Kathy, Stephen said to her, if this works out, that his sister had a car for sale, and he may do the same thing as in putting it in the auto trader. Kathy states prior to leaving, Stephen asked Kathy how he could contact her if he needed to. Kathy told Stephen he could call the main office number like he had previously done. I asked Kathy if at any time Stephen did anything out of the ordinary or suspicious. Kathy stated he, meaning Stephen, did not. However, she stated, he creeped me out. I asked Kathy what she meant by that, to which Kathy stated it was just the way Stephen was staring at her. Kathy also stated when she pulled up, the dogs were barking very loudly, so Stephen would have known, had to have known, that somebody was outside the trailer. However, he never came out until she went and knocked on this door. Kathy stated that was the only time that she had been on the Avery residence, and then she quit working for Auto Trader in April. According to Kathy, when she was taking pictures for Auto Trader, she was using a Nikon Coolpix. 2100 camera. Kathy states after she quit working for Auto Trader, Teresa had come to her residence, she believes in the month of May, and picked up her camera for the Auto Trader. According to Kathy, Teresa was already working for Auto Trader before Kathy quit working there. I asked her how she knew this, to which Kathy stated she had seen her name on a roster of employees. 
In speaking with Kathy, she stated she talked with Teresa. Teresa stated she had to pick up her camera and had mentioned something about the auto trader having a storage facility. Teresa had told Kathy that every once in a while, auto trader had her go to the storage facility. I ended my interview with Kathy at approximately 1810 hours. Investigation continues. Investigator Mark Wiegert, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 333. Type of activity transfer of evidence to FBI. Date of activity 010606. Reporting Officer Investigator Mark Wiegert. On 010606 at approximately 1330 hours, I, Investigator Wiegert of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, met with FBI agent Gerald E. Mullen. My purpose for meeting with Gerald was to turn over the remnants of the cell phone and camera which had been recovered from the burn barrel on Stephen Avery property. I had been provided with the key to a locked storage unit in the Calumet County Evidence Room by Sheriff Pogel on 010506. Sheriff Pogel had received that key on the same date earlier that morning from Evidence Custodian Jeremy Hawkins. I took custody of that key and it remained in my possession until the date of 010606 when I went down and retrieved the box containing the cell phone and camera remnants. I did take into possession property tag number 8316, which was the box containing those items. That box was turned over to FBI Agent Mullen for transfer to the Federal Bureau of Investigation's lab. For analysis, investigation continues, Mark Wieger, Investigator, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 334, Type of Activity, Interview of Penny A. Bernston. Date of Activity, 01306 at 9.15 a.m. Reporting Officer Investigator Mark Wieger on 01-1306 at 9.15 a.m. I, Investigator Wiegert of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, made phone contact with Penny Bernson. My purpose for speaking with Penny was to determine if she had any relation to the Hawbach family. Penny stated she is not related in any way to the Hawbach family and was not familiar with them until she had heard about the recent case regarding Teresa Hawbach. I asked Penny if she had ever spoken with any of the Hawbach family. Penny stated she had never spoken with any of the Hawbachs. Penny also stated to me she had never done any business with the Auto Trader magazine. I asked Penny if she had ever been to the Avery property. Penny stated she has never been to the Avery property and is not familiar with the layout. Penny also stated she has not had any contact with Stephen Avery or any of the Avery family members since the incident had started. Penny did tell me she had received a message from a subject by the name of Dean Chadri, who had brought who had bought her candy store in Manitowoc. According to Penny, Dean had told her one of the Averys, which he believed to be a Carla, had left a message for Penny and wanted Penny to call her. Penny stated she never returned that phone call and does not know what it would have been about. I then thanked Penny for her cooperation and ended the phone call conversation with her. Investigation continues. Investigator Mark Wiegert, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 335. Type of activity interview of Sunshine M. Zelwinski. Date of activity 01. 1506, reporting officer, investigator John Dietering. Documents generated, none. On Sunday, 01506 at approximately 1500 hours, investigator Weigert and I Dietering did interview the following individual at the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department. Sunshine M. Zelwinski, date of birth, 091181, formerly of 1131 Swift Avenue, Sheboygan, Wisconsin currently incarcerated at the Sheboygan County Jail. Sawinski's name was mentioned during the interview on 112905 of Michelle M. Schmitz. Schmitz indicated that Sunshine was acquainted with Stephen Avery and Avery used to babysit her. Wiegert and I introduced ourselves and provided Sawinski with credentials. Sawinski indicated she grew up in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. And when she was in her first and second grade, she in resided in an apartment complex known as Southfield Townhouses on South 23rd Street in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. 
She stated Lori Avery, Stephen's ex-wife, babysat her and her siblings from time to time. She stated she was friends with a subject named Rachel Avery and her sister, Jenny Avery. She indicated she recalls there were twin boys named Billy and Stephen that were children of Lori Avery. She stated she does not ever recall having contact with Stephen Avery. She stated to her recollection she has never seen him. She denied that Stephen had ever babysat or taken care of her. She stated she may have seen Stephen Avery at some time, but is unsure of that, about this. She stated she recalled the name when he was released from prison. Sunshine indicated she had no recollection of any maltreatment or harm at the hands of any Avery family member. She did state she recalled when bad stuff was on television, Lori would ask the children to cover their eyes with pants, legs, or other clothing articles. She stated this was not to imply there was anything improper going on during the time that she was being taken care of by Lori Avery. Sunshine Zobinski had nothing further to offer concerning this investigation. Page 336, John Dietering Investigator, Calumet County, Sheriff's Department. Page 337, Type of Activity, Receipt of Mitochondrial DNA Results from FBI Lab. Date of Activity, 01-1906, Reporting Officer Investigator Mark Wiegert. On 01-1906, I, Investigator Wiegert, of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, did receive a fax from the Federal Bureau of Investigation located in Quantico, VA. The fax was a report on the results of the examination of the mitochondrial DNA sequence, sequences that were obtained from charred remains compared to a buccal swab from Karen Hobach. For the results of that examination, please see the included FBI report. Investigator Mark Weger, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 338. Type of Activity, Interview of Tammy L. Weber, Date of Activity, 01-1906, Reporting Officer, Investigator Mark Wiegert. On 01-1906 at approximately 12 o'clock p.m., I, Investigator Wiegert of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, along with DCI Special Agent Tom Fassbender, went to the address of 1617 18th Street to interview Tammy L. Weber. Upon arrival, we knocked on the door and we were invited into the residence by Tammy. We began speaking to Tammy in reference to her relationship with Stephen Avery or any of the other Avery family members. Tammy stated she has known the Avery family since she has been a child. She stated she, in fact, grew up with the Averys. I asked Tammy about previous statements she had made about there being police officer involvement in the alleged setup of Stephen Avery as well as statements she had previously made that a certain officer had made comments that Stephen Avery had been set up. Tammy stated a nephew of hers by the name of Joshua Walter had come to her house along with two friends by the name of Jason and Sean Snyder. Tammy states at that time they were talking about the Hobock murder case and Joshua, Jason, and Sean had stated that they had learned from a Two Rivers police officer that Stephen was possibly innocent. Tammy stated to me at that time if anybody did it, it could, it would be Chuck. I asked Tammy what police officer made the statement. She stated she did not know, she just knew that it was a Two Rivers cop. Tammy stated she initially agreed with those guys that she did not feel that Stephen was capable of doing such a thing and was not guilty of it. She stated to me, however, since that time, as more and more evidence comes out, she is second-guessing herself. I asked Tammy, when was the last time she saw Stephen? She stated she would see Stephen on a regular basis, and Stephen and his girlfriend, Jody, would come over to her house occasionally. Tammy states this past summer she believes it was in June or July, Stephen and Jody had come to her residence. She stated while Stephen and Jody were there, Stephen's niece, page 339, blank showed up at the residence. Tammy states Jody became visibly upset and stated, that's his B. Tammy stated Jody made the statement to her that Stephen had been F her, meaning blank. When Blank showed up, Stephen and Jody ended up getting into an argument, and Jody asked Tammy to take her home. 
According to Tammy, at that time, they did get into her vehicle and left her house. Tammy told me when they initially got into her car, Stephen was parked behind her and he would not move his truck. Tammy stated she went out and confronted Stephen and told him he had better move his truck, at which time Stephen did do so. Tammy states Jody and she then took off from her residence en route to Stephen's residence where Jody was staying. According to Tammy, she was driving at least 75 miles an hour because she wanted to get home before Stephen got there. When they were driving down the highway, Jody states Stephen came up behind them very fast and passed them and pulled over on the roadway. Tammy states she then pulled behind Stephen on the highway and stopped the vehicle. At that time, Stephen got out of his truck and Tammy got out of her car and told Jody to lock the doors, that she would discuss this with Stephen. Tammy states Stephen was very upset and told Tammy he wanted Jody in the truck and stated nobody was going to take her to the trailer but him. Tammy stated she would not allow this and told Stephen they were going to his residence and he could meet them there. When they arrived at the Avery residence, Tammy states they all went inside and Stephen and Jody continued to argue. At one point, Jody was pointing her finger in Stephen's face and Stephen slapped her hand out of the way. I asked Tammy what they were they arguing about. She stated it was about Blank showing up at the residence because Jody was very upset with the relationship that Stephen and Blank had. Tammy also remembers one night getting a phone call from Jody stating that Stephen was beating her up. According to Tammy, that was the night Stephen had got arrested for beating on Jody. Tammy also told me that Stephen told her that he does not know if he loves Jody or Blank. She states that on one occasion, Stephen had made the comment that Blank is a slut, and then the next time he would say how much he liked Blank. Tammy states she stayed at Stephen's and Jody's residence, which would be on Avery Lane, until things calmed down and then she left. I asked Tammy if she could tell us any more about Stephen Avery. Tammy went on to say, went on to tell us how she remembers one day this last summer Stephen was over at her residence and the neighbor's girls were outside. According to Tammy, the neighbor girls were wearing low-cut shirts and everything was sticking out. Tammy told us that Stephen then started horsing around with the neighbor girls and started grabbing at their breasts. According to Tammy, she told Stephen to stop it that they were only 13 or 14 years old, and Stephen made the comment to her, if you need a piece, you need a piece. Tammy states Stephen was chasing the two 13 or 14-year-old girls all around the yard. Page 340. I asked Tammy if she knew anything else about Jody being abused by Stephen. Tammy states she remembers Jody showing her a lot of bruises. The bruises would have been located on her arms and legs. Tammy also remembers one occasion Jody telling her that Stephen tried to strangle and kill her. She believes that she this was the same night Stephen had gotten arrested. Tammy also remembers Stephen's ex-wife coming around with bruises and black eyes, and his ex-wife would say he had fall, she had fallen down the stairs. Tammy went on also went on to tell us how a couple of people had told her Teresa Halbach had been related to the Bernstein family. One of the family who had told her that would have been Joshua Walters, her nephew. Again, Tammy went on to tell us how she did not want to have her name out there as given information about the Averys because you don't want to cross the Averys. I like living. Tammy also stated Stephen's sister Barbara carries a bat around in the car in case someone would cross the Averys. At that time, we thanked Tammy for her cooperation and left the residence. We ended the interview at 12.33 p.m. Investigation continues. Investigator Mark Weaker, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. All right, you guys. We're going to do our review. We're starting on page 331. And it's an interview with Kathy Williford. Now, remember, you guys, there is a Kathy Williford. It's supposed to be spelt with a C. That's a special agent that Angela Schuster, I believe, or Don uh, at Auto Trader had mentioned worked, they believed, for DCI. So... <sighs> You know, is she a DCI agent? I'm not sure. But what's interesting is in this interview, we don't have anything which is reported later about coming to the door in a towel for Stephen. Not a word of it. In fact, he doesn't really invite her in until after quite a while when she's a little bit chilly. He says if she's cold, she can step in. But he has to write some sort of a little, um, what is that called? Intro. 
let's see, what did they call it? Narrative. Now, how come we don't hear about the narrative at all with any of the other vehicles? Is there something maybe Auto Trader takes it down when the person calls in? I'm just not sure. Maybe it got changed. But um, she doesn't seem to have any problem with Stephen other than she feels a little awkward. And she doesn't like it being in a desolate area. Um, he doesn't do anything out of the ordinary nor suspicious with her. She does report that she was using, uh, it's called a Nikon Cool Pix, and it's a 2100 camera and that she gives this over to Teresa. But what's interesting is when she Teresa comes to her house and picks up the camera, that Teresa mentions that Auto Trader has a storage facility. Why they're talking about this, I have no idea. But that Kathy brings it up that Teresa, every once in a while, has to go to the Auto Trader to the storage facility. I just find that odd. Now, on page 333, it's a transfer of evidence to the FBI and it is the possession property tag number 8316, which is the box containing the cell phone information or contents of the cell phone burn barrel. And it's given over to a special agent named Mullen, and they're going to analyze it. And then on 334, bizarre enough, they're contacting Penny Bernston for an interview. Now, she was the original victim in 1985. What in the world would she have to do with this case? Um, they ask her if she's ever spoken to the Halbach family. No. Um, they ask her if um, she's done any business with the Auto Trader magazine. No. Um, and then they go on to state... She doesn't even, she has never been to the Avery property and is not familiar with the layout. Um, that she has been in contact with Stephen, but not since the incident started. Um, that she received a message from Dean Shradi that Carla, who would now be Carla Chase, at the time was Carly Avery, had contacted this gentleman that had bought the candy store and left a message for Penny that they wanted Penny to call her. So what would the original victim have to do with this case? I am not sure. On page 335, we have Sunshine. Now, Lori Avery babysat Sunshine, but she doesn't even know Stephen, and she had nothing to add. So I don't know what the rumors are going around in the jail, but that didn't make any sense that she would know anything if she has never even met him. Page 337 is the receipt of the micro, mitochondrial DNA results from the FBI. And in that result, the FBI was unable to confirm that Teresa Haubach was the owner of the bone or the person the bones belonged to. But they are able to say that they cannot rule Teresa Haubach out. And that's all that was concluded. Unlike when Sheriff Pogel reported to the press and poisoned the jury pool that it was a match, that was not a true statement at all. That was a complete lie. Now, interesting enough, we have Tammy Weber. Now, <clears throat> page 338. Tammy has been a family friend of the Averys for a very long time. She's talking about her nephew and two other friends are stating that a Two Rivers police officer or cop has absolutely told them that it's possible Stephen's innocent and that they believe that he's being set up. Now, Tammy states if anybody did it, it would have been Chuck. And um, they go on to continue to say that Stephen and Jody got into an argument when they were at Tammy's over Marie Avery. And that's who they're talking about, is Earl's daughter. Okay? So Earl, again and his daughter and there has been this argument and it carries on all the way back to the uh, Tammy follows them or actually drives Jody all the way back to Stephen's trailer and they get in an argument and Jody is pointing her finger right in Stephen's face he doesn't beat her up he slaps her hand out of the way well that's normal fighting um, and this little argument that Tammy's calling about with Jody getting choked and all this beating up and stuff. It's interesting that they did not detain and charge Stephen. They simply arrested him and then Jody 
had no interest in filing charges, nor did she have any marks on her, according to the investigators. So I'm not sure where Tammy's getting all these marks that she's saying she sees when the investigator said that Jody didn't even have marks on her um, that would even make it fit a choking and that Jody didn't press charges. Tammy does go on to stay that she said that there was a 13 or 14 year old girls that had everything hanging out and grabbing their breasts and stuff like this with Stephen chasing around the yard and stuff. I don't know. Tammy's already got a bunch of stuff twisted, so it doesn't look like she's boating well for Stephen. She states that she remember. She seems more like um, family friend that probably hangs out with Earl a lot if Marie's going there a lot. And uh, she's talking about Stephen had gotten arrested again. This is talking about the item with Jody, but he's not charged because she has no marks on her. Jody has n nothing that shows that she actually was harmed. And she refuses to press charges on Stephen. However, Tammy goes on to say that a couple people have told her that Teresa Halbach was related to the Bernstein family. Now, I'm not sure if that's true, but I will tell you that Mrs. Bernstein's husband, Tom Bernstein, does resemble Teresa Halbach, believe it or not. They have very similar eyes, and I did check that out, and um, could be. It very well could be. In this case, it's so confusing, and everybody's related to everybody, so I don't doubt it. Tammy goes on to report that Barbara carries a bat around in her car in case somebody crosses the Avery's. I think Tammy likes to talk a lot of stories. Uh, that's just my thinking. I don't know. She seems to be the, the uh, chatter of all the things that she's not sure of, but she's going to make sure and give them to the police officers. That concluded part 34 and uh, leaves more questions than answers. And I want to thank you for all the support for Brendan and Stephen and keeping them safe and the support for our channel. And uh, with that, you guys, it's time. If you didn't do the crime, you shouldn't do the time. Thank you and have a great evening.